Good morning, my brothers and sisters. It is Friday, and I'm glad just to be before you today and just to bring this Word of God to a close uh, this entire week. You know, we've just been trying as much as we can to be able to answer the questions of life. And I want us to go back to our scripture before we pray. Ephesians chapter number 5, verse 15 to 16. The Bible says, Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Let's believe and pray. Our Father and our God, we are so honored, so privileged, dear God, to be alive at such a time as this. Indeed, the days are evil. But just to have this fresh breath of air that God you've given to us freely, we want to say thank you. And that Lord, we can be able to sit down and speak into the lives of your people so that they can be able to live as people who are wise, uh, looking unto the days that are before them. And so therefore, Lord, it's my prayer that as we come to a conclusion of our devotion this week, that King of glory, God, you may enable us by your spirit and your grace to answer these very questions of life. We bless you and we honor you. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we have prayed. Somebody say amen. Just type amen right there. And I know that God is indeed going to bless you. You know, we need to answer this question very carefully. Where am I going? Where are you going today? Just in case the Lord says, like he said to the rich full man, he said, your soul will be required of you tonight. If by any chance, God forbid, but if by any chance, that's the word that comes to you today. Can you be able to answer this question? Where am I going? Can you be able to answer that question? I want you to know that we are standing on the brink of very important decisions. And the decisions that we are going to make this entire week and this Friday will affect the trajectory of our lives this morning and in the coming months and in the coming years. That decision needs to be made. And just like the Israelites stood on the brink of the promised land in the book of Numbers, chapter number 13, today we must make a conscious decision of where we are going. And that talks about our destiny. The Bible, I want you to understand today that the Bible is a book about destiny. And that's why I've got quite a number of translations right behind me here. Because it, it includes a lot of things that if you read this Bible, if you read this Word of God, you will know where you are going. These words are replete with great plans that God has for each and every individual that is listening to me, that is watching me, that will have an opportunity to listen and watch me at a later date. I want you to understand that our Heavenly Father promises us that you can be able to trust him for his main desire is the best for you. He wants you to have a good destiny. And that's why Jeremiah 29, 11, in the Message Bible, it says, I know what I am doing. I have it all planned out. Plans to take care of you, not to abandon you. Plans to give you the future you hope for. The question is, do you know where you are going? God has a plan for you, but your choices matters. Your decision matters. He will not interfere with your will. You need to use your will for the glory of God. And that's what the Bible says, that the spirit contends with the flesh and the flesh contends with the spirit because all of them are fighting for your will, fighting for your control. You must understand that in this life, experiences have always shown that having a great potential does not necessarily translate into having a great destiny automatically. It's one thing to have great potentials, but it's another thing to entirely have a great destiny. And now, 
one reason why great potentials do not automatically translate into great destinies is because of the existence of the enemies of destinies. It is very important, children of God, to be able to understand these enemies because what you don't understand, you cannot confront or conquer. And what cannot be identified cannot be rectified. What is not defined cannot be refined. And you need to find out what are these enemies of destiny. As we follow, you know, the instinctive path of our passion, molded into action, we connect to destiny. And as we begin to explore the path of destiny, we gain a barometer by which we may measure authentic purpose, otherwise known as success in our lives. And one can't define success in dollars or in shillings or in euros or in cents. It can only be quantified by the accomplishment of a predestined purpose. And that's what we are talking about this very day. This need to be able to understand and to answer the why of life cannot be satiated solely by the fame of wealth or notoriety or even education as none of these very things that a majority of us brag about. These things, none of these acquisitions guarantees that action that has aligned with the purpose in our lives. Destiny, child of God, is the push of our instincts to the pull of our purpose. I need to say it again, and this is T.D. Jakes who said this, that destiny is the push of our instincts to the pull of our purpose. All your gifts must be given a place of expression in order for your destiny to be able to unfold. We are most effective, child of God, when we yield to the allure of destiny. Every gifted person needs a place to be able to engage the gifts that are rooted in the inside of them. And no matter how gifted you are, child of God, you need a place of expression. That place is called destiny. Your instinctive gifts are the metal inside you. Your destiny as a child of God is the magnet that draws you into your predestined arena. I want you to understand, child of God, this morning, as you answer the question, where are you going? You must understand that destiny is bigger than you. Destiny is bigger than you. It's so much bigger than you. Trust that the results are not in your hands. An encounter with your destiny generally comes only after intentional exposure and heeding the pool of purpose. And I want you to just think about a girl or a guy that most probably you wanted to date or you are dating currently, you know, you, you wanted to really impress that particular individual. If you were still in school or you're in college or you're at your work, you might have updated now your wardrobe and started wearing makeups. If you're a lady, you'll now begin to wear some heels. You might have gotten a part-time job so you can afford to take her out into this restaurant that has an opulent decor, you know, a restaurant that... You know, you feel that represents the real you or your image or who you are. And so when you appear in front there, you know, everything uh, that is around you, your environment defines you because there's a stature, there's a level with which, you know, you carry yourself. You did all that to be able to get that person's attention. You did all that to be able to show that very person that you are worthy of getting closer to either him or her. You show destiny that you are worth getting close to. You begin to show destiny that you won't mess up the opportunity to travel in the same circles with her. Destiny, child of God, is a fastidious companion that is rarely, if ever, stumbled upon by God's children. 
But until you find her, she will tease you. She will taunt you. She will call out to you as you endeavor to discover the why of your life. Destiny will sometimes be the elusive, be elusive and guide you on a circuitous path as you follow her in search of why you'd like to be joined to her. But when you're led by instinct as you pursue your purpose, you will discover the why of your life. And then you will know the fulfillment of destiny. That that fulfillment of destiny is the greatest kind of success that you can ever hope or attain. I want you to understand this very morning that your destiny awaits you. Your destiny awaits you. And most people, a majority of people that are living life, that have gone through the vicissitudes of life and are now alive, those people who found themselves in the hospital beds, you know, and got out of that very hospital and, and you're now alive and you're walking through, you know, life, you're beginning to think of where you are. You almost died. You almost left us. You almost left us with nothing much to do. In fact, some of your spouses took photos of you while you were in hospital as the last picture that they saw when you were still breathing. But I want you to know that now that you have made it, destiny awaits you. Most people have sensed the pull of destiny. You've sensed that pull of destiny, the magnet that caused, you know, you to meet, the magnet that, you know, caused you to have your being or the magnet that has enabled you to be able to realize who you really are and what you are supposed to do here on earth. And during these times of reflection, while you're in your office, while you're in your house, while you're on your bed or seated in an Uber driving to work, as you're having these reflections, most of us are amazed to realize that the greatest moments of our lives happened only through a series of circumstances that we ourselves did not even initiate. Think about the serendipitous encounters the synchronous timing of events and the chance of the meetings that you have had in your life with the different people that you've met. Had you not been in that restaurant, you never would have met that business contact. Have you, had you not been in that restaurant, you wouldn't have met your future spouse. Had you not been in that particular conference, you wouldn't have met your employer. If you had not attended that particular camp, if you had not attended that particular conference that was in your church, your fascination with wildlife or biology or botany or sports or religion or whichever place, your fascination about that would have never been spawned. What orders our steps? To the faithful, it is God. To others, it is their achievements. But what orders our steps as God's children is God himself. And it is him who wants us to answer this question. Where are you going? Destiny awaits you. The secular people may interject words like fate or luck, that you came out of that hospital bed by sheer luck. You came out of that accident because of fate. But I want you to understand today that whatever name they give it, all of us are left drawn by the pool of destiny's allure. Ride the wave of life, child of God. Ride the wave of life. Ride the wave of life with a sense of guidance to something beyond self-gratification because destiny awaits. As you ride through the wave of life, it earns so much meaning in your life, I know. But I don't want you to halt at the rest stop of destruction or succumb to the indulgent luxury of self-pity. I want you to figure out where you will spend your tomorrow. 
I want you to have that pool of destiny allure towards you because I want you to begin to think of where you will spend your tomorrow. I know there will be problems and challenges that we would face and those could be merely distractions from the greater force of, of the destiny that draws us from where we started to where we will accomplish what we, want, what we were meant to do. But don't allow those distractions to, decide, to deter you from reaching your destiny. Destiny awaits, child of God. It's always an adventure. As you go through the destiny steps, it drives us past the pain of life to the purpose of living. There is more going on in your life, child of God, than just you. There is a pool of destiny because destiny awaits. The overarching pool of destiny helps you to be able to accept the events and the circumstances that, exam that are examined in isolation at times. They may, you may look like a failure because of the things that you have done, because of the situations that you've gone through. You may look like you missed it. You may look like you will not make it. You may look like you are at a place whereby you're at a place of a loss. But upon deeper reflection, however, those seeming tragedies are the catalysts that shift you into your place of destiny and that's why the Bible tells us in Romans chapter number 8 and verse number 28 and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them and the things that are working together might not necessarily feel good because of the situations that you're going through. Life is beating you left, right, and center. You're out of your work. Your business closed down. Your partners in your business decided to go their own way. And, and you know, the very tenders that you used to have are no longer there. And you're really wondering, can you be able to make it? Will you be able to do what is expected of you? Some of us ended up compromising, doing stuff, getting children out of wedlock, getting early in marriage, you know, hooking up with our friends former boyfriends and ex-girlfriends ex, ex and we do a lot of things in our lives but I want you to understand child of God there is a pool of destiny. Destiny awaits you. You cannot afford at this juncture to waste your life for a mere satisfaction. All you need to do child of God is to understand that there is a pool of destiny that is telling you that no matter what happens in your life all these things have been orchestrated by God and he knows what is happening but the thing that you need to do is to be able to hear the beckoning of the Holy Spirit. Respond to the beckoning of the Holy Spirit because destiny awaits you. You must be able to answer the question, where, where are you going? Where are you going to spend your eternity? Where are you going? I know life may not seem to be fair because of the things that you are going through. The pandemic has hit you. Loss has hit you. There's a lot of doubt. There's a lot of unbelief. You know, you've lost your money. You've lost your property. Some have lost your loved one. You've lost your children. Life is beating you left, right, and center. And you are telling me you cannot be able to answer the question of destiny. But I want to tell you, don't allow the things that have happened in your life to be a blockade of where you are going. Where you are going is so much important in the eyes of God and in your life than what you are going through right now. If you allow them to, they can usher you into the arenas and opportunities that will shift your life into a pattern of focus and purpose that work together for your good and the good of all humanity. There is more renewed child of God that you cannot afford to give up right now. An inestimable number of people have asked this very question. Is this all there is to life? The answer always lies within the very one who asks that very question. Because if you determine in your mind to seek more, you will always find there is more you can be able to get out of life. There's a greater impact, child of God, that you can have. There's a bigger footprint that you can make during your short time here on earth and without even knowing your circumstances, I can tell you with certainty that the answer is yes, there is more 
in the inside of you that you cannot afford to waste your life. Your journey to your vision, child of God, is not different. God created you with the raw materials that you need to reach your destiny. And what may be lacking in your life is just a blueprint or a design to pull together the raw materials inside you in the masterpiece of your life. Your raw materials are right in this Bible, in these books. If you want to know where you will spend the rest of your life, read the Word. If you want to know where you will spend eternity, read the Word. If you want to know God's plans for your life, read the Word. If you want to know the benefits of serving God and being in salvation, read these words. Practice the word. Talk the word. Embrace the word. Ruminate over the word. Be word located. Be wordonized. Be wordified. Be worded. Be word located. Be full of this word. And when you read through this word, it will point you to your destiny. The question is, where are you going? Can you be able to answer the questions of life? And that's my conclusion today. Can you be able to answer the questions of life? Who are you? Where are you from? Why are you here? What can you be able to do? Where are you going? If that light is switched off today, where will you go? Where will you spend your eternity? That's the question I'm asking you today. And if you want to answer that question, you better give your life to Jesus and just say these words after me. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I come to you. I acknowledge that I am a sinner. But this morning, willingly, I open my heart. Come in. Make my heart a home. I have confessed with my mouth and believed in my heart. And I am born again. If you made that prayer, would you please contact us on these numbers right here? Or talk to us through our website, our Facebook, and our YouTube page. And we'll be able to respond to you accordingly and just begin to disciple you. Otherwise, may the Lord God bless you. May the Lord God do you good. And may the Lord God give you the grace to weather the storms of life. And by the end of it all, may he enable you to answer the questions of life. I want to see you among the numbers that God will be counting in heaven. When he says, good and faithful servant, may you be among the good and faithful servants in Jesus' name. God bless you.